Brother Bede and Brother Thomas, on this day of ordination, the gospel invites you to return to the upper room in Jerusalem, the place where the Eucharist and the priesthood were born together and a new commandment of love was given. Here, St. John declares, Christ showed the perfection of his love. In the Holy Eucharist, we have come to know the love which goes to the end. For Jesus gives himself totally to us in the sacrifice and sacrament of the altar. In this same love without measure, you are being called to give yourselves in the diaconate and the priesthood. The same boundless love which inspired St. Dominic and Blessed Adrian Fortescue in their vocations of pastoral charity and in the supreme witness of martyrdom. St. John Vianney glimpsed the connection from his youth between the gift of the Eucharist and the gift of the priesthood. In the turmoil of revolutionary France, the only priests he knew were men who were ready to risk their lives to bring the mass and the sacraments to the remnant of the faithful. He concluded that to become a priest was to be a man who was ready to give your life. Yet the giving of a whole life amounts to so little before the self-giving of Christ in the Eucharist, which is truly love without measure. This led the Cure of ours to make a far from simplistic diagnosis that whatever goes wrong in the life of a man ordained goes wrong because he has been inattentive to the Eucharist. And so we can understand why Pope Francis today invites those discerning their vocation to be attentive to the silence of the Eucharist. We can more fully appreciate why Pope John Paul II reflected that every call to the priesthood is bound up with Eucharistic faith, is discovered, we might say, in the light of the Eucharist. How often this great saint of our lifetimes invited priests to return in spirit to that upper room to rediscover the wonder of our vocation. When some years ago I accompanied Brother Thomas and pilgrims from the Shrewsbury Diocese to that upper room as it is found today in the southwest corner of Jerusalem, it might be a sight which is disappointing. The place where the Eucharist, the priesthood, and the sacrament of penance were instituted, the scene of Pentecost, and the birth of the church's mission has been repeatedly torn down by the violence of men. The most recently rebuilt church six centuries ago was converted into a mosque and is now held as an empty historic building by the state authorities. Yet the very emptiness of that upper room seems to point beyond itself inviting us to make a place for the Eucharist in every community, in every one of our lives. And today we pray that the upper room will serve as an enduring personal invitation for Brother Bede and Brother Thomas in their life and ministry. The Dominican vocation invites you to hand on the fruits of what you have contemplated to all those souls who now await you as priest and deacon. The attentive celebration 
of the Eucharistic sacrifice and the prolonged adoration of the Blessed Sacrament must always be at the heart of your vocation. St. Thomas Aquinas in his prayer, Adoro Te Devote, expressed lyrically how this contemplation leads to an ever greater wonder. As he prayed, hidden God, devoutly I adore you, truly present beneath these appearances. My whole heart submits to you because in contemplating you, all is found wanting. Entrusting you on the day of ordination to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, may your wonder and adoration never cease. Amen.